Hi everyone, I'm Yana Smakula and welcome back to My Favorite Things YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a colorful birthday card for a child or an adult, and we'll show you how you can simply color with alcohol markers, alter images with the help of a pen, and also make a colorful background using inks. I'm starting to work on my card just like I always do, by stamping the image I want to color in alcohol marker friendly ink on white cardstock. In my previous video for My Favorite Things, I shared how you can color with your Copic markers on colored cardstock. And if you'd like, you can use that method here as well. I'm using a fun image of stacked animals from the Birth Yay stamp set from My Favorite Things, and I'm stamping it using my Mini Misty stamping tool in black Copic marker friendly ink. I also stamped another image off camera and used it as a test. I colored images using various markers and noted down the colors on that sheet. I am glad I did that as A, I can save this color reference with my stamp set and then use it again in the future without having to rethink various marker colors. And B, I didn't like some of the color choices that I made and seeing them on paper, on my test sheet, I was able to change them and use different colors on my actual coloring. I wanted this card to be filled with color, joy, and laughter, so I opted to use warm, soft colors for my project. I started coloring using pink markers and went with the RV13, RV11, RV10, and RV00 colors. I typically like to color with the darkest color, and then go to my medium and then to the lightest. If needed, I go back to my medium and my darkest color to intensify the shadows. There are many different ways to color with alcohol markers. Some people like to start with the lightest color, meticulously blending each subsequent shade with it, and others start with the darkest color first. I am not the kind to overthink my coloring and stress about shadows and highlights. I like to color quickly without putting too much thought into it. As long as it turns out pretty in the end, it works for me. I also used the same pink markers on a few other sections of this image, on the beak, wing and tail of the bird, and then on the frosting of the cupcake. Next, I moved on to coloring my turtle. And here I used G21 and actually started with the lightest color. Next, YG63, my medium, and G94 as my darkest shade. And then I came back to my lightest to blend the colors together. I also used a lot of gray markers here, C7, C5, C3, to color the toucan. I personally prefer to use warm grays and not cool grays to color living creatures, but I don't actually have dark warm gray colors in my collection, so I reached for cool grays for this bird. Next, I use W5, W3, and W1 markers to color the body of the turtle and also the rhino, using the W5 marker only to create some heavy shadows. Next, to color monkey, I used E00 and E02. These are my go-to skin colors. And also E33 along with E11 to color the rest of the monkey. At this point, I brought in some yellow markers and colored the cupcake wrapper and also the party hats yellow. I used YR14, Y17, and Y08 markers. Originally, I had blue hats on my test image, but I didn't like how they looked. I didn't like the blue color, and I think yellow worked much better here. Next, I used a coordinating die and cut this image out in my docketing machine. I like to use my white pen to add various details to the colored images and even regular stamped images. Here, I used size 8 Sakura Jelly Roll pen, and I added a few white dot details on the back of my rhino. I also decided to alter some of the party images here and added white horizontal lines to the party hats and white dots to the cupcake wrapper. I also like to use the same white pen to fix any marker bleeding. It sometimes happens and my marker gets outside the stamped line. I just color over it with my white pen. You just need to make sure to wait for the marker to dry or it can eat up your pen. 
And finally, I like to color with a white pen over any tiny detail areas that got colored over with a marker. For example, the dots on the back of the turtle or the feet detail on my rhino. Since it's a party card, I felt it was appropriate to add some shimmer details to the balloon and I also later added some to the toucan as well. With my focal point now ready, I moved into creating a background for my card. I wanted to do some simple yet colorful ink blending to support the colors that I used for my coloring. I picked several Distress Ink colors, it's been forever since I used them last, and you can use your Distress Oxide inks for this or other inks as well. You can even do a background like this using your markers or watercolors, whatever medium you like to use. Ink blending seemed like the easiest here. I used just four colors, picked Raspberry, Wild Honey, Tumbled Glass and Peacock Feathers. I feel like these are staple colors and will always give you beautiful results. I overlapped each color with the next one to create a section of orange in between the pink and yellow and a section of green in between the yellow and blue. I set my background aside to let the inks dry as I wanted to do some heat embossing over them and then I moved on to creating a secondary sentiment for this card. I wanted to add a little vertical strip and I wanted it to say let's celebrate. In the stamp set I'm using today, there is a sentiment that reads let's celebrate you. I didn't need the U, so I carefully cut it off using scissors. You can also mask it if you'd like, if you're not comfortable cutting your stamps, but I feel safer when I just cut it off. Plus, I can always put my stamps back together the way, the way they were intended and use them that way. I stamped this message in black ink twice on white cardstock trimmed into a skinny strip. With my ink blended background now dry, I moved to heat embossing. My idea was to white heat emboss additional messages going across the ink blending to add pops of white in the background. I treated my panel with an anti-static powder tool and after inking up the stamps with clear embossing ink, I stamped a number of sentiments reading sending endless birthday wishes, where I should say I stamped the same sentiment a number of times. I used both the grid of my mat and the grid of my clear block to try and stamp those sentiments straight, and both were very helpful to align everything perfectly. I coated my stamped images or stamped sentiments with white detail embossing powder, and then I heat set them using my heat tool to melt the powder. Naturally, my panel warped a bit from all of the heat from the heat tool, so I opted to use a layer of fun foam to adhere it onto the card to flatten it up. I also used fun foam with adhesive on both sides and dyed an identical stacked animal's shape from it to use as a foam adhesive layer to adhere my colored piece in place. I personally love to use this trick when I want to add dimension to my cards, but I don't want to use foam adhesive. I plan to send this card through the mail and I don't want it to get squished in transit. I don't want to have any sagging areas, so using a solid layer of fun foam is very helpful. Here's that fun foam layer. This I just cut a touch smaller than the paper itself. After much deliberation about the element placement, I finally made up my mind and adhered it closer to the left. I also added that skinny strip sentiment and adhered my colored animals on top. One last step, I added a number of clear drops using Nuvo drops from Tonic Studios in Morning Dew. I hope you will give this idea a try. If you do, please share online and tag us on social media. We always love seeing what you guys are making. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.